glue. Not far is it? From a brush stroke, bamboo leaves. Oh. So once you get control of your brush to make different strokes, then you move on to the bamboo. It's quite simple. I've got a brush full of black ink. And I've got a white cloth here. So I can see what colour is on the brush. Hmm. If I take a lick of that, I might be able to get two turns on there. So I'm painting the brush with two turns. Let's see if I can get that any better. Mm -hmm. There. So you're getting some sort of shading on the edge of that leaf. So the first thing you learn is the bamboo. Simple leaf shape. And then how to shade. So that you can then go on to the bamboo stem. Now instead of just going straight and slashing the paper, start to go on its side. See what happens. You get tones coming in. You can cheat a bit. It's so good. There we go. You learn how to paint the bamboo. Right. Gone very quiet. He's still there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Of course, with this interference of one stroke and another, you always jump over something that's been painted before. It's easier painting with, with your finger being guided by the paper, isn't it? So that's the bamboo, and then. I, I studied that in Kew Gardens because I wanted to know what bamboo was like. In those days, they didn't have many bamboos. Nowadays, a lot of people have bamboo in their gardens, don't they? I think we had about ten pounds. <laughs> Just silly things you do when you're young. Right. Just leaves. A bit, a, bit of, a bit of wrist has come in there and it's gone a bit wobbly. If you don't use your wrist, you get much straighter, nicer leaves. Right, Let's see what else we can do here. Here's a nice, nice little brush, simple, black, long fibre, it's good, it comes to a good point. We can do here. Right, this fella. <laughs> Very simple, isn't it? Very simple painting. The sparrow. <laughs> So it's very simple, isn't it? Maybe if I can dry it enough, I can just get the fluff. Fill his body in. Oops, that's gone a bit dark. There we are. There's a very simple painting. <laughs> Sparrow in bamboo. Right. Oh. Of course, you can introduce colour quite easily now. So here's my colour set that I take out with me painting. I've got a cadmium yellow pail. I like using tubes. Um, pans, I get them in such a mess that they, um, by the time I finish cleaning them, there's not much left in them. <laughs> I 
got yellow, blue, clean water. Which brush should I use? I'll use another one, like, a bit like the other one. But this, this has got black in it. Once the brushes have got black ink into that mass of material at the head, it's very difficult to wash it out. So try and keep your white brushes for colour and the uh, brown ones, they'll, they'll go in the ink. Once you get ink into a brush, it's really hard to get out. Right, so let's see, here we go. Let's mix up some colour. Here's the blue. And then maybe we'll be able to use that one. It's got a lovely, lovely stem, lovely patterned bamboo, that one. Must be a posh brush. Hang it up like that to dry. That's what these are for, because you want water to drain away from the bamboo stem. And it tells you all about it here. This is number four, Black Heaven and Blue Temple. This is made by the Everlasting Shop. <laughs> but usually they tell you the, the town where they're made. Quite a lot seem to be made in Shanghai. Yeah, I'll mix those up. So here, this brush has got yellow on it. Take a towel. Blue. brush like that for your bamboo leaves. Two fingers in front, two behind. If you're a master, you can just hold it like that. But if you're a bit nervous, <laughs> do that. <laughs> so there you are, you're painting with two colours there. Daddy bamboo. Here you have a mummy bamboo. Oh, that's, that's a, bit, a bit naughty. That shouldn't really be appearing at the same level. That's mummy bamboo. Big brother bamboo. And little sister bamboo. There you go. So you see how you can get painting with two colours at the same time. By putting your main colour on the brush and then another colour contrasting. It must be a lighter tone, doesn't it, than the one you're putting on. Yes. Grandfather bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can even turn the brush around to make it double it. There we go. <laughs> Grandfather bamboo. That's quite useful, having two colours on the, on the brush at the same time. There we go. And you can, what should you do here, little fella? Just about. Yeah. Boot it this time. Chrysanthemum is the, uh, I think, is the bravest one. He blossoms by the eastern gate as the frosts come. And you've probably got some chrysanthemums around you in the garden now, haven't you? Here we have uh, how to do a chrysanthemum flower. You start here and you build up your strokes. And you can see there's a bit of tone on there, isn't there? It's a three-dimensional, so it's how to do a flower. Uh, ah, there you go. You got it? <laughs> Three little strokes. That's what you do for flowers anyway. Three little strokes. That's how you start a peony. That is the first stroke and it stays at the front. And then you build up either side more and more and more and more and more till you get the head of the chrysanthemum. Here's one I painted yesterday and it was really, really windy. That's my name. That's my seal. So I'll have a go at painting that for you. I thought I'd do um, 
a yellow and a, and a red one, just to make it an orange. So that's a nice, cheerful and warm colour. So there we are. This is the yellow. This is the red. It's still got a bit of green on, which would be quite exciting, I think. Quite fun to do. Right, so this is it. Now, if you're ever worried about doing a painting, it's nice. You can't put a sketch on this paper, but because you can't rub it out, but you can put it underneath, and I can still see it. Quite often, I'll do one painting and think, "Ooh, I better do that again," and I'll just put another sheet on top and do that again, and then another one, and another one. At the end of the day, I get quite a pile, <laughs> <laughs> and the ones at the bottom have got all this lovely paint that seeped through and made all these serendipity marks. So. I quite enjoy that. Right, so I've got this brush here, it's a nice brush. It's got a nice balance to it. Yep. Let's see what happens. And then you do to one, a little more. And then I've got to remember that it's getting blown, you see. Whoa! Usually you do the head with about one load of the brush. Otherwise, halfway through, you'll get the half the flower. Or it tends to be a bit, a bit confusing. And then you've got your basics <coughs> down. Now you can go in and go, all right, I want to strengthen the middle. <coughs> there we are. There we are. Whoa, it's not quite blowy enough, is it? Whoa, let's make it a bit more blowy. <laughs> Oh, gosh, it was blowy yesterday. You see, it's slightly different yellow. It's not quite right. Still, it's okay. I like a bit of variety. And then uh, we'll make the green up. My teacher always said, never use green. Well, he's obviously never been to Cumbria, has he? <laughs> but he was, um, oh, I thought he was ever so old. He was probably only about 60. See, I, I was only in my 20s when I got there. And, uh, uh, yeah, I thought he was ancient. Um, he'd been a very successful artist before the war, but then the war had come. And I don't know what happened to him in the war, but I know that his wife had died of starvation. It was a bad time. It was a hard time. But I was there in the 70s, so they still remember those days. Yeah, I suppose he would. Poor man. So he was making his living painting pictures for pilgrims. I think chrysanthemum leaves are quite dark, aren't they? I think you'll have to get a bit of dark on there. You start with the stalk of the, of the leaf sticking out. It's not really blowing, I feel. That's better. Right. Get a, get a baby one there. Oh! Right. Ooh, that's parallel. Shouldn't really be parallel. Right. There we go. Um, put in there. Do that. Get a bit of green. Right. So you start with the end of the leaf, and then you know how they go, don't you? They, they, the lobes, don't they? The chrysanthemum leaves. And I want it a bit darker to contrast with the flower, really. So you do that. And then one, two, a bit like a chrysanthemum leaf, isn't it? Just a bit. I'm doing lots of 10-10, aren't I? Little rice marks, aren't they? Yeah. Fill it up with a nice bit of dark, dark stuff here. Contrast. Yeah. And while it's still wet, you can put the veins in there. One, two, three. These are really quite thick, but don't have to be that thick. The chrysanthemum is the, the green fellow, little green hope as the frosts come in. Even, even now, a little one here.
Oops. A sort of a little bit of relationship, you see. Everything. There's the baby one looking up at the adult, going, oh, yes, things are going to be all right. <laughs> I'm getting blown, but you're getting even more blown. Everything's going to be fine. Then, of course, coming up behind me, there is a bit of bamboo that's uh, going to support them. And you put back, just a tad of and uh, you tie this chrysanthemum. There we go. Right. So it's tied up, so it's all right. It's not going to fall over. I don't know if you can see that all right. It's got a bit dirty behind. I put this behind. Okay, so that's the chrysanthemum. And... Like that, then? No. Yeah. Oh. And then you, you, you've got to decide where you're going to sign it, you see. Oh. I'm always using white, so I know the strength of the ink that's on my brush. I was smoothing the fibres so they'll let the ink go nice. That's great where I put it, right. So, here we go. I. That means love. Re. That means reason, and this is me. That means Confucian virtue. And then I put my seals. Switch. Think that. Oh, there. We go. It doesn't matter if it goes on there. It goes over my writing. That's fine. So there is a, a painting of a chrysanthemum. Right, so... <laughs>